Okay, 10K PB in eight weeks. I want you to aim for knocking 10% off your current 10K time. This is exactly how I do it week by week. I'm gonna lay out the weeks for you so that you can take a big chunk off your current PB for 10K within a short space of time. Now, I received this question in the comments below. Could you do a similar video for the 10K? My best time is approximately 46 minutes. I want to improve this significantly and get this to a sub 44 minute 10K. And I asked, basically Doug for a little bit more information. What's the running background? What does your current week look like? And this is what I got. I've been running for about six years now. Currently my weekly kilometers are between 30 and 40. My training is split between weight session three to five times per week, one swim per week and running three to four times per week. I then asked him, thanks, any structure or faster running or is it just three to four easy runs per week? And then he explained, I try to do at least one fast paced session per week, whether that's an interval or a threshold run. I'm in Northern Australia, so usually in the summer months between December and April, it's super hot and I'm on the treadmill. I don't think I utilize my easy runs very effectively. And since watching your videos, I've only just found out about recovery runs, which is really interesting and great that you can put that to work. I'm currently on a break as I've been traveling in Italy for the past month. During this time, I find your videos. This time off has got me super excited to get back working on my fitness. It's the longest break I've had in about six years. So lots of development areas there. So he's currently got a 46 minute 10K PB and wants to knock two minutes off that and run 44 minutes for 10K. It's a great goal, these are fast times, but it's just a 4% or 4.3% increase. It doesn't drive me wild, it doesn't get me excited. Is it high, that kind of target? A lot of you will be thinking, well, if you can improve 4% in eight weeks or 4% in 12 weeks in a schedule and then continue to do that, within a few years, he'll be, and that's the typical thinking. My thinking is more like this. If we look under the bonnet there a little bit at those answers, sometimes it's hot in the summer, sometimes I get down to a track night, sometimes I'll do an interval, I try to do a speed session, it's kind of ad hoc. And if we're really, really brutally honest with ourselves, we're probably on for about 60% of the time, which means for 40% or 20 weeks of the year, we're kind of playing with running. All I'm asking from, from, from you for this is to be completely dedicated for eight weeks and then a taper afterwards. And if you do that, and if you go all in for eight weeks, and I'm not saying absolutely go mental in every rep, I'm talking about controlled, but be all in, in terms of the overall schedule, the endurance, the speed, how we're gonna build the speed, I'm gonna come on to in a second. And we put in all our effort into this and seeing what we're capable of in a really short space of time. Now, to explain this easily and to aim a bit higher, his current PB of 46 minutes, let's call that 45 minutes. And let's try to go for a 10% increase or a little bit more and aim for a sub 40, more than achievable. Now, in order to see how realistic that is for you, you need to ask yourself three questions. What's your running background? What's your recent background and your sports background? And what's your experience so far with structure and with faster running, with intervals? If you can answer those questions honestly, then you can answer how far or how long it's gonna take you in order to get to where you really wanna be. 10% gain is not a big amount of time, especially if you're in your first three years of running. So for this, we're aiming to run a kilometer in four minutes and every kilometer is for 10 kilometers, 40 minutes. So we need to be comfortable at running four minutes per kilometer. And we also need to work on running faster than that. So we need to be comfortable at running 330, 340, 345, 350 kind of pace. So we're aiming for 40 minutes for 10K. That's four minutes per kilometer. So if you can currently run 46 minutes or 45 minutes for 10K, what can you run a kilometer all out in? What's your current pace for one kilometer? And what's your pace for 5K? Obviously those are relative and they have a relation towards the goal that we're trying to hit. The faster those are, the smaller the gap it is to bridge towards your 40 minute target. Let's pretend for this example that you can run a kilometer all out in 330 to 340 per kilometer. So week one, we're gonna start with five times 1.5 kilometers running at four minutes per kilometer. So it should be comfortable for us to hold that. 
And you can work these times out depending on what your time is and your goal time. But we're working five times 1.5 kilometer to 7.5K total volume, a lot of volume, but we're always gonna be working between six and 8K in this schedule. And we're having 60 seconds rest as always. So we're teaching our heart rate to go from high, getting the breathing under control during the recovery, during the rest period, bringing that down so that we can tr control the next interval, the next rep, and control the total session. Really important. Week two, we're gonna do 15 times 400 meters. So six kilometers total volume. So much easier to deal with, but we're gonna run that faster. We're gonna run those 400 meter repeats in 330 to 340 per kilometer. So we're teaching our body to be efficient at moving over the ground faster by 10, 12% than what we're going to need to do on race day. Really important. What's gonna to be tough about this session, especially if you're new to speed and intervals, it's gonna to be tough to hold pace. So really focus on holding pace, controlling the interview interval. If it means that you kind of, you're running 350, 355, and it feels like a struggle to you, don't worry, it's a really good sign. It means that you've not focused so much on speed before and you're tapping into a new area. And within three, four, five weeks, you're gonna see yourself as a completely different athlete. So week three, four times two kilometers, 60 seconds rest in between. So we're increasing the rep length. Total volume is eight kilometers and we're aiming for that four minutes per kilometer again. So we're aiming to make those kilometer repeats on an interval day where there's nobody watching us, there's no race adrenaline, it's just you out there running four times two kilometers. They're gonna feel long, and you've only got 60 seconds to recover in between each one, but if you can hit that, there or thereabouts, four minutes, you're putting yourself in a really good place really early on in the schedule to be running that 10K in 40 minutes. So week four, we're returning to 12 times 500 meters. So shorter intervals, six kilometers of work, and we're really focusing on quality. 60 seconds still rest in between, so we're continuing to get used to that and to get used the heart rate used to going from high to low and recovered. If it only comes down to sort of 150, 140, whatever that might be, over the weeks as you practice this, your heart rate is gonna get better at dropping during that recovery. And for these 500 meter repeats, just want you to focus on pacing, being in control, trying to hit that 330 to 340 mark. So it's a shorter interval, and we're focused on the efficiency. And again, if you're new to intervals or you're new to speed work, this should start to feel, you should start to feel the benefits from the first few weeks and be able to sort of feel that you're able to move over the ground more efficiently when you're running faster. Now, week five is exactly the same as week one. So five times 1.5 kilometers, 60 seconds rest in between. And we're focused on controlling that four minute pace and making it feel comfortable for us. Now, I want you to check yourself in this session. And I want you to think versus week one, exactly the same session, how easy does four minute pace feel for me? And if you're at this point, you're in week five and you're already seeing the benefits from the other speed sessions, if you can pinch five seconds or 10 seconds or even 15 seconds and aim at between sort of 350 and 345, if you feel comfortable after the first or second rep, do it. Because that's how you get to the end of the schedule, and you're not just running, just dipping under 40 minutes, but you're running it way faster. Okay, week six, 600 meters and 300 meter intervals. We're gonna do eight times 600 meters and eight times 300 meters. What I want you to focus on here is doing the eight times 600 meters, aiming for 340 or 345, and then switching up a gear and going quicker for the eight times 300 meters, trying to run them in 330 or even faster. What we're doing there is psychologically, we're finishing fast during the race. This is over seven kilometers of total, total volume in the session. We're also psychologically, when it's getting tough during the session, we're increasing the speed, but we're doing it in an interval that is half the rep length, 300 meters, than the 600 meters that we've done before. Week seven, three times three kilometers. It's only three reps, but it could be, depending on whether you prefer the longer reps or the shorter reps, this could be the most difficult week. So week seven, three times three kilometers and 60 seconds rest in between. Now, if you can aim and hold four minute pace or a little bit faster, 355 to four minute pace, then just a couple of weeks away, you're in a great place to run sub 40. But what I want you to do in those intervals First rep should feel quite comfortable based on what you've already done. Second rep, probably midway through to the, to, to the end of that second rep, is going to start to feel difficult. And the third rep should feel like, ah, I've only got one more rep left. 
Psychologically, you're only doing three reps, so it's very, very manageable. But those rep lengths are long. They're going to be around about 12 minutes per rep. So focus on digging in when it gets really hard because it's really going to help you with your race. Now, week eight, 10 times 800 meters, just 10 reps of 800 meters. I want you to focus on going 10 seconds per kilometer faster than you're going to go on race day. So 350 per kilometer pace. I want you to try and hold that for 10 reps of 800 meters with 60 seconds rest in between. Now that should fill you full of confidence that you're doing eight kilometers of total volume, breaking it up into 10 reps, and you're holding a faster pace than what you're going to be running in the 10K, whether that's time trial or race, you're really building confidence and you're good to go at it then. Now, I haven't mentioned the rest of the week, the rest of the schedule, the long runs, the easy runs, the recovery runs, strength sessions, everything else that comes into the holistic view of you moving forward as an athlete. But from that point, if you're all in for those eight weeks and you really hit it, I give myself 10 days for the legs to freshen up before going for that. So factor that in as you're building that schedule. And then for the race, I want you to start solid and really dig in when it gets tough. And then in the final two to three kilometers, just go for it and try to dip under that 40 minutes. And if the training's gone well enough, you should be well under that. And remember, we've got to be aiming high. We've got to be aiming high. So 4% depends on the background and there's lots more questions that I would need to ask. But we need to be aiming high enough that if we hit it, we're absolutely over the moon. Because if you're aiming for goals, that if you hit it, it's just like, oh, well, yeah, I expected that. It's not gonna be exciting enough to stick at and to constantly have the habit of running on a daily basis, which is what you need to do to get to the next levels. Good luck with that. If you enjoyed this and you wanna keep getting faster, maybe you wanna to try to get the 5K first and go for a 5K PB. Here's a great video for that. And if you wanna see how my training evolved from starting out in running four hours plus for the marathon and then getting that to two hours 21 with other fast times along the way, Here's a video for that here.